Hello, uh, welcome to lecture 3 of module 1. Uh, today's topic is equilibrium. You see, uh, before we start today's topic, let us quickly review uh, what we have learned so far. Uh, you see, in last class we stopped here and uh, this is the gist of our first two classes. Uh, what we have learnt is that uh, analysis is essentially is a process where we determine response of a structure uh, subjected to certain threat. We also learnt that when we do structural analysis then uh, we need to idealize the system, uh, idealization of structure and as well as idealization of threat. Now, we will be discussing in this course two different idealization, one is plane truss and plane frame. Uh, beam is also concept of beam is important, so we will also review uh, the concept of beam. And as far as idealization of threat is concerned, we discuss that uh, uh, any threat uh, can be translated into concentrated and distributed force or concentrated and distributed moments. So, structure plane truss and plane frame subjected to this and then the response we will be looking for is internal force and deflection, internal force from safety point of view and deflection from serviceability point of view. So, what we will do today, today we will take the first step towards that. Okay, uh, specifically we will uh, specifically in this lecture today we will discuss uh, degrees of freedom, support and support reactions, static equilibrium equations, determinate and indeterminate structures and determination of support reaction using static equilibrium equation. Okay, let us first start uh, degrees of freedom. What is degrees of freedom? Uh, before I give you a formal definition of degrees of freedom, let us try to understand. You see, as name suggests, it is a freedom of uh, any object to move in three dimensional space. For instance, if I take an object like this, now this object is uh, what are the possible way that this object can move? First is this object can move in this direction then this object can move in this direction and then this object can move in this direction. So, this object can, can translate in x direction, y direction and then again z direction. Now, this object has three translation degrees of freedom. Now, apart from this translation degrees of freedom, this object can rotate also. For instance, this, this object can rotate like this, then this object can rotate like this and then this object can rotate like this. So, this object can this object has three rotational degrees of freedom. Now, therefore, any object in three dimensional space has three degrees of freedom three sorry six degrees of freedom three translations and three rotations. Now, let us see if we if we uh, for two dimensional problem any object how many degrees of freedom it has. Uh, in two dimensional problem, this object can move in this direction, this object can move in this direction and then this object can rotate like this. So, this object can have three degrees of freedom, two translations and three and one uh, rotation. Probably, I am going to show you some animation for that and things will be clear uh, after uh, seeing those animations. Now, if I have to formally define what is degrees of freedom, then it says that degrees of freedom of a me mechanical system is the number of independent coordinates required to completely specify the configuration of the system. Now, if we if we if we try to find out the relation between just now uh, the way we explain degrees of freedom and the formal definition, you will see that the both definitions are consistent. Uh, now, let us let us for more. Uh, uh, so, uh, to, to appreciate it in a better way, uh, let me show you some animation. You see, this this is the uh, this is the degrees of freedom uh, for in, in in three dimension. You see, you considered any object. This this is cube is an object. Okay, now 
this is the coordinate system x y z this object can move in x translate in x direction this object can translate in y direction and this object can translate in z direction. So, these are the three translation degrees of freedom. Similarly, this object can rotate about x axis this object can rotate about y axis and this object can rotate about z axis. So, these are three trans rotational degrees of freedom. So, total this object has 6 degrees of freedom. Now, you will see that if we want to define, if you want to uh, if you want to define the motion of an object in three dimensional space, then these 6 degrees of freedom is enough to describe its motion. Now, uh, let us see in two dimension. Now, this is x coordinate, this is y coordinate, now z coordinate is suppressed. So, this object can move in x direction, this object can in move y direction and this object can rotate in z direction right. So, uh, this view is the planar view of this uh, of the three dimensional view. So, this is x direction, this is y direction and this rotation is about y axis. So, any object in two dimensional space has three degrees of freedom. Now, you see uh, what degrees of what is external stability of a structure? You see, if we consider any structure, for instance, if we consider this structure, okay, uh, this is we, we if you remember we talk about idealization of a chimney, where uh, uh, mm, uh, the idealization is uh, the chimney itself is modeled uh, idealized as a one dimensional uh, element and then support. Okay, now what we have here if you see uh, uh, there are three component of this structure one is the uh, this is the member of this this is the member and then this is the support and then another thing we can have uh, component which is the joint now if you take for instance if you take another structure like this like this now, it has two members and these two members are connected here and then in addition to that we have another support here this member this uh, this structure is supported at somewhere. So, if we if we see these components of structure there are majorly three components one is the member uh, and the joints joints means the connection of those members and then uh, the support uh, support means the member is connected to either the structure is either uh, fixed at ground uh, or fixed at some other uh, structure, so that it restricts the motion of the structure. Now, let us today we will be talking about support, importance of support. Now, you see what happens uh, if any structure is not supported, then what happens the structure becomes unstable. For instance, you you take any object which is just kept on the ground, there is no connection, there is no support between the object and the ground. Then if the structure is uh, if the structure is subjected to some load horizontal load for instance, then what happens the structure becomes unstable you see. So, because there is there is there, there is uh, nothing uh, to hold the structure to the ground. Now, uh, therefore, without support any structure becomes unstable. Now, what the support does? Support provides constraint and reduces number of degrees of freedom. You see in this case, it is a two dimensional problem. Now, how many degrees of freedom this object has? In this object has three degrees of freedom. One is translation in this direction, translation in this direction and rotation uh, about z axis, rotation um, in this plane. And these three degrees of freedom completely describe the motion of this object. Now, when this object is not supported, then means this object has all three degrees of freedom. Therefore, when it is subjected to any kind of load or any small agitation, this object will undergo motion, uh, which can be described by all these three de degrees of freedom. Now, you see if, if we support this structure, suppose in this case, this structure is not supported at the ground. Then what happens if I apply the load then because of the support this object will not move the way it is moving 
when it was unsupported. So, what does it mean? It means that when we apply a support, then this support restricts some degrees of freedom of this object. Now, the object is not restrict degrees of freedom means the object is not now free to move the object the freedom of the object is restricted freedom of the object to move is restricted. So, one of the uh, one of the major role that uh, support plays or the, the, the major role support plays is it restrict the degrees of freedom and makes the structure stable. Now, as I said here there are three degrees of freedom now now the question comes when when a structure is supported then what degrees of freedom is restricted? Is it the translation degrees of freedom restricted or it is rotational degrees of freedom restricted? Even if it is translated translation degrees of freedom then translation in which direction is restricted? So, depending on what kind of support you are giving, depending on uh, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, degrees of freedom you want to restrict, you can have different kinds of support. Now, let us see some example. For instance, the first kind of support is uh, fixed support. Fixed support means as as name itself um, uh, say that it is fixed to the ground or fixed to any any object such that it cannot move. Uh, when I say it cannot move means all degrees of freedoms are restricted. For instance, if you see uh, uh, if you see this is the idealization of the chimney and uh, this is the fixed support. Now, since this is fixed at this point, all the degrees of freedoms are restricted means this object cannot, this point cannot move in this direction, this point cannot move in this direction and this point cannot rotate also. And which is evident from this figure you see, uh, this is obvious this, this point is not moving in either this direction or this direction. And but another important thing that if you look it carefully, the slope if we draw the slope of this uh, slope, um, if you draw a straight line and see the slope, then you will see the slope at this point is 0. It means the object is not rotating, this is called fixed support. Now, representation the fixed support is represented like this there could be different way if you see any book uh, but uh, in throughout this course whenever we whenever we use this uh, representation it means it is fixed support here are some of the examples of fixed support uh, this fixed support is also sometimes called built in support now next is uh, suppose now in this case all degrees of freedom are restricted now let us instead of that uh, instead of restricting all degrees of freedom restrict only the translation and allow the rotation and if you do so then we have the next kind of support that is called hinge support or pin support there are some examples of pin supports. You see uh, again this is evident this point is not moving anywhere so translation degrees of freedom are restricted but this is this entire object is free to rotate about free to rotate uh, about this point and therefore, if you see the slope, slope at this point is not 0. So, this kind of support is called pin support or hinge support. Representation uh, whenever we use this symbol, uh, it means that it is uh, hinge support. Now, so in this case what we have done is we allowed the object to rotate. So, uh, degrees of freedom the object has now is or at this point the degrees of freedom allowed is only one which is rotational degrees of freedom and provided constraints are two, two translations are constrained. Now, let us allow uh, one translation also meant rotation plus one translation then what happens then next kind of support we have roller support or sticky roller support. Why it is called sticky roller support I will tell you shortly. Now, you see here what is happening this object is also uh, this this point is also uh, translating in a particular direction ok. So, these degrees of freedoms are uh, the ob this object has degrees of freedom in this direction ok. So, these degrees of freedom is not constrained, but the uh, why it is called sticky roller because uh, it is it is it, it will not leave the ground means these degrees of freedom is not uh, uh, not allowed this is constrained the only degrees of freedom only 
uh, it has in this direction. So, this is roller support and representation, representation is whenever we use this symbol, this means it is roller support. Now, let us sh show you, I have some model for, uh, for, uh, for these different kinds of support. Let us show you those models. First, the fixed support. You see, suppose this is the support and this is the member and this is fixed here. If you, if you apply any load, any load, then this of this point neither it translate nor it rotates. So, this support is called fixed support, there is no movement at this point. Okay. Now, next is we have, uh, we have hinge support. You see, suppose this is the object, this is the object, again the idealized uh, structure and it is hinged here. Uh, now, it is free to rotate, you see. But the translation of translation degrees of freedom, uh, they are restricted. Only degrees of freedom it has to rotate, uh, it, it can rotate. So, this is the characteristic of hinge support. Now, the next support is roller support, where only one uh, translation is allowed. This is roller support, if you see. Uh, now, uh, it is, it can slide over this support. You see. So, this translation is allowed, uh, but it will not leave the ground, uh, that is why it is, uh, it is, it is sometimes called sticky roller. So, th this is the example of roller support. Now, if you see, uh, this is the, some of the figures, uh, which, which can, uh, which, which can tell you how the roller support uh, may look like. Okay. So, these are different kinds of support we can have in a structure. Now, if the structure in, is in three dimensional, three, then also the concept of fixed support, hinge support and roller supports are equally valid, but in that case what happens? Your when you talk about translation, you have to you have to talk about three translation, when you talk about rotation, there are three rotations and when you talk about, um, um, so uh, then your characteristic support will be based on three translation and three rotation, but the concept, the definition of these different kinds of supports remains same. Okay. Now, uh, what happens uh, when a structure is supported? You see, uh, as of now, it is clear to us that uh, uh, if we, if the structure is not supported, then it becomes unstable, right? So, uh, what support does? Support it is because it is without support, a object is unstable because uh, because it has all degrees of freedom. Okay, it can move freely uh, in, in in space. Now, uh, when that object is supported, support provides constraint against certain degrees of freedom. Therefore, the object is allowed to move in a particular manner, but other movement is restricted, and in doing so, we provide stability to the structure. Okay. Now. Uh, but what exactly support does? Okay. Now, take example of this. You see, uh, this is an object. Okay. It has, it is, uh, 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 this object is supported uh, at two places. One is at the ground and one is uh, you using a prop. Um, for instance, if we do not provide support, then what happens? For instance, if you take, uh, if you take this thing, hmm. If we do not provide support, then uh, then uh, now this is supported here. Now, if I remove, if we, if I, if, if I remove the support, then it, it will fall. Then what I can do is I need to provide support, right? Now, if I do this, this means this is supported here and this is supported here. This is hinge here and this is maybe roller or hinge at this point. Okay. Now, what exactly I am doing here? this object is under its self weight. Okay. So, if we do not provide any support because of the self weight, it will fall down. Now, what exactly we are doing here? Uh, we are applying a force at this point. We are applying a force at this point. Okay. And this force and this force, they balance the weight of the structure. Okay. And therefore, the structure is stable. Okay. Now, exactly this is happening here. Now, this is the object which is supported uh, at the ground and also um, with a prop. Okay. Now, what this floor is actually doing? Uh, floor is actually providing a force to this object 
okay, or instead of force we will call reaction to this, this is the self weight of the, this is under self weight. So, how this floor will react to this, uh, the floor will react by providing a force at this point and this is that is why this is called reaction from the full floor. Reaction from the floor is a, sub, uh, a force in this direction. Similarly, what this prop will do, prop will also react to this and what will be the reaction? Reaction will be applying a force like this in this direction. Okay. This is the reaction from the prop. Now, what happens? The structure will be stable. Intuitively, we can say that structure, this object will be stable when the reaction from the floor and the reaction from the prop, they both balance the self weight of this object. If they cannot balance the self weight of the object, then uh, this object will fall down. And therefore, uh, in order to make the object stable, this, this force and this force total reaction needs must balance the, uh, uh, in this case self weight. If we, if we tell in a very general way, then these two reactions must balance the external load applying on this object and to make the object stable. Now, what is the difference between this figure and this figure? The difference is the object remains same, but here the object is made free from the support, it is taken out from the support and the supports are replaced by equivalent reaction and the this is the self weight of the object. So, this object is called free, this drawing is called free body diagram free body diagram because it is now free from all the support and all the supports are represented by their reaction. This uh, I, I believe that some concept of free body diagram you already have in your mechanics course and uh, solid mechanics course, but we will review uh, the concept once again in this course. So, this is the free body diagram. Now, uh, uh, so you see this this table gives you the characteristic of different kinds of support. Now, let us talk about fixed support. Fixed support is what? Uh, fixed support it restricts uh, all degrees of freedom, it, do, it does not allow translation and rotation. Now, how it removes, how it restricts the translation? It resists translation by applying a force in that direction. Now, since it has two translation means this this support restrict the translation in this direction and this direction by applying reaction in this direction and this direction. So, the translation restriction in the translation is due to this force, this reaction force and this reaction force. Now, this support will also restrict since it is a fixed support, this also restrict the rotation how the rotation is restricted? Rotation is restricted by applying a reaction moment in, uh, in a particular direction. So, the characteristic if I have to remove this support, then this support has to be represented by two reaction force and one moment. So, uh, by combination of these three forces, two force and one moment, all the degrees of freedom at this point is restricted. Okay. So, this is the character, characteristic of fixed support. Now, let us see the pin support, pin support allow rotation, but it restrict translation. How it restrict translation? It restrict translation by applying reaction in those directions. So, therefore, if we if we remove this, if we remove this support means uh, that has to be represented by two forces uh, uh, in two directions. Since it allows rotation means there is no restriction in rotation. Therefore, there will be no uh, resistive moment, there will be no reaction moment uh, at this support. This, this is the characteristic, characteristic of pin support. Now, let us roller support. Roller support it allows, um, it, 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 it allows uh, 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 translation in one direction and also rotation. So, therefore, uh, and it, it, it restrict translation in only one direction. Therefore, suppose in this case the translation in vertical direction is restricted. Therefore, uh, how it will be restricted? It will be restricted by applying a reaction force here. Okay. So, if we remove this support, 
then that has to be represented by a reaction force in vertical direction. But there will be no reaction in horizontal direction because the object is free to move in horizontal direction. There will be no movement, there will be no uh, moment because the object is again uh, free to rotate at this point. So, these are the major three kinds of support and they are equivalent, um, they are free, they are degrees of their free body diagram. So, this is essentially the free body diagram of this support, this is free body diagram of this support, this is free body diagram of this support. We do have another kind of uh, um, not support, yes you can say uh, suppose in some way that is the internal hinge. Let us not discuss internal hinge here right now. Uh, while uh, while attempting to solve problems, we will uh, discuss uh, internal hinge and what is their effect. Another important thing uh, majorly we discuss here three kinds of support, one is fixed support, roller support and hinge support. Uh, one and there could be different other supports as well. For instance, if um, the one support is called uh, the support on elastic foundation. Okay, uh, those things uh, we will discuss later, but for the time being we have only three supports uh, fixed, pin and roller. Okay. Now, you see uh, let us discuss the free body diagram of some problem. Uh, you see this is uh, this is this is a pro this is a simply supported beam subjected to concentrated load. Uh, this is hinge support here and this is roller support here. Now, let us draw the free body diagram of this object. Okay. Now, uh, free body diagram means it has to first it has to be taken from taken out from the support system, the it has to be free and then the supports has to this all the supports need to be represented by their equivalent forces. Now, just now we saw the roller support means is apply only a vert, or, or apply only force in reaction force in one direction normal to this uh, normal to this support. So, this support has to be has to be replaced by an equivalent uh, vertical force. Now, this is hinge support, the characteristic is one horizontal force and one vertical force and this is uh, uh, this is this these this two forces uh, represent the hinge support. Now, uh, you give some name, the nomenclature the, the naming system we will use here is B y means it is reaction force at B in y direction it is reaction force in uh, reaction force at A in y direction, there is reaction force at A A in x direction. So, this is the free body diagram of beam A B. Okay. Now, see uh, let us take one more example, uh, the same this, now this hinge support is now replaced by fixed support, let us draw the free body diagram of this. Uh, the same thing this is replaced by roller support replaced by vertical force and this fixed support is replaced by two horizontal force and one moment and this becomes the free body diagram of uh, this beam again the same naming system and A may means moment at point A. Now, suppose if I take a section here, okay. now if I take a section here then we have two part one is this part and another one is this part. Now, suppose I need to draw the free body diagram this part and this part separately. Now, uh, you take this part uh, and then this hinge is replaced by equivalent forces and uh, this part you see this part will be treated as uh, uh, treated same as fixed support. Uh, these things will be more clear when we talk about internal hinge. Uh, now, since if, if this section is, is, is treated as, uh, as same as fixed support means if we remove if we cut this member at this section means the reaction force will be or the internal forces will be uh, in this case um, not the reaction internal forces will be uh, vertical force one is vertical direction one is horizontal direction and one is moment. So, this is the free body diagram of this part. Now, similarly, if I take the free body diagram of this part, then again this will be replaced, replaced by vertical force and this is represented by two forces and one moment. You see one thing is highlighted here, the sign convention in free body diagram will be discussed in the next class. You may ask that why in this case forces in, the, in all other cases we have given force in 
um, in upward direction. In this case, we have given moment uh, like this, but why in this case we have given moment like this force in a, um, uh, downward direction, but when we draw the free body diagram of this part, uh, we use the horizontal force in this direction, vertical force is again in other direction, moment is in other direction. What sign convention we use here that will be discussed in the next class when you talk about beams. Okay. But here the point why uh, what uh, we want to make is the concept of free body diagram. Okay. Free body diagram is if you want to draw the free body diagram, the system has to be free, uh, the system has to be taken from its support system and all the supports uh, need to be replaced by their equivalent forces. Okay. Now, um, next just now as I said that, uh, uh, um, uh, so if if you if you if you take if you take a free body diagram if you take the free body diagram in this case say in this case uh, now this is the external load and this is the support reaction right in this case this is the external load and these are the support reactions and these are the internal forces okay now in order to make this structure stable what we need is all these this is these are essentially reaction right reaction to this external force what is imp what is needed uh, for the structure to be stable is all these reaction must balance the external force okay and that property that that is called equilibrium so what is the equilibrium equilibrium is you see uh, you have an external load on a structure and the structure will respond to that when structure respond to that means its support will respond to that its external load is uh, the the internal forces in the member will respond to the external load now when these internal forces they balance the external load then we say this this object is in equilibrium okay and uh, it is it is the the object has to be in equilibrium um, um, for stability otherwise the object will not be unstable. Now, then what is equilibrium? Equilibrium is will be summation of external forces has to be equal to summation of all internal forces, summation of external moments has to be equal to all internal moments. Okay. Now, in three dimension how many in three dimension how many forces we can have? We have uh, three forces uh, and we can have three moments because just now we said that uh, in three dimension we have th six degrees of freedom, three translations and three rotation. So, three translation means three forces and three rotation means three moments. So, summation of forces in any particular direction or summation of moment uh, in about any particular axis um, have to be 0. Uh, that is the equilibrium equation and similarly if we extend if, if for two dimension case we have two translation means two forces and one rotation means one moment and this is the equilibrium equations for uh, two dimension okay now uh, when when these equilibrium equations are satisfied then we can say the object is stable and uh, object is stable and the object will not move uh, in uncontrollable manner. Okay. Now, you see um, one point is very important here. For instance, if I if I give you an example, uh, suppose uh, um, uh, an aircraft is flying um, or uh, an aeroplane is fly, flying, it is moving right or you or you, you fire a bullet and that bullet um, the, the, the bullet travels through here. So, this bullet is also moving. Okay. Now, uh, does it mean, uh, now the aeroplane is flying means it is in motion, right. Does it mean that it is not in equilibrium? Uh, it is also in equilibrium, but that equilibrium will be different. You see in this case, uh, this equilibrium is called, when these equations are satisfied, this, equi this equilibrium is called equi static equilibrium, okay. Means you, your underlying assumption is the object is in uh, static condition, so it is not moving, okay. Now, um, this is static equilibrium and these are these equations are called equilibrium equations. Okay. Just quickly give, uh, let me give you some demonstration of static, what is the uh, usefulness of static equilibrium equations. You see when we demonstrate that usefulness of static equilibrium equation, this is the sign convention we are using. Uh, 
but remember this sign convention and the sign convention I, I, I mentioned while drawing free body diagram they are different. Free body diagram sign convention we will discuss later mm, and in subsequent classes. But for this the sign convention is this uh, forces in this direction and forces in direction is are taken as positive and clockwise moment is taken as positive. Quickly suppose this is this is a simply supported beam subjected to uh, uh, vertical load um, concentrated load at C and naturally this is the equilibrium equations right. Now, uh, this is the free body diagram. Now, what are the equilibrium equation? Equilibrium equation says, says that in two dimension forces in y direction summation of forces in y direction 0, summation of forces x direction 0 and summation of moment at any point will be 0. Right. So, summation of forces if you take summation of forces in the x direction 0, then only component uh, the horizontal component of force is x. So, x will be 0 in this case. Now, take summation of forces in y direction 0, what are the forces we have in y direction a y b y which is upward direction means positive then p downward direction negative. So, a y plus b y minus p is equal to 0, it gives you a y plus b y is equal to p. Now, then summation of moment is equal to 0, you take uh, moment about b, it gives you that a y uh, a y into a plus b which is clockwise direction. Uh, if we um, then if we take moment about b this force this will be in clockwise direction that is why positive then there will be moment for p as well and by this moment will be anti clockwise direction that is why negative and you have another e a y is equal to this and substituting a y here you get b y is equal to z. So, all the reactions are a y is equal to this a x is equal to and b y is equal to this. Now, you see applying equilibrium equation we could we could determine the reaction forces. Right. Okay, we'll stop here today. Uh, some more examples uh, will be shown in the tutorial class. Uh, thank you.